Hi there, my name's Gordon Farragher. This recording gives you a few tips about how to prepare for exams, and also what to do when you're actually in the exams themselves. I've been preparing people for professional exams for the last 34 years, and these tips I'm going to give you have always been important. They're probably increasingly important now as the trend is for more self-study, more flexible learning. So what people do on their own in preparation for the exams becomes increasingly important. So the first thing is you have limited time and you have a lot of work to do, so you need to use your time effectively. So how are you going to make sure you do that? Well, one little trick before any study session is to decide what you want to achieve, not how long you want to work for. That's depressing. If you say to yourself, I'm going to work three hours this evening, that, that's just misery. And you're not going to work well because you're not going to be in a good frame of mind. So what you want to say is, right, by the end of this session, I'm going to go through this chapter. I'm going to make these notes. I'm going to work this question. It's got to be in terms of what you want to have achieved rather than what you're going to put in. And you will then work much more effectively. And once you've done what you've achieved, stop. Give yourself a treat. When you're working, a, a sort of massive myth that people have is, oh, the best way to revise for exams is to read me notes. No, that is passive learning. You will fall asleep. You will take nothing in. You will just waste your time. You actually have to be doing something actively. So if you're reading notes, praising them, summarise them. The notes that you then take, you might probably just chuck in the bin. It's the fact that you've made them and your brain's had to be active to do them, to think about it. That's what puts things into your brain. Don't work for too long in one go. The brain does get tired, it gets cheesed off, and as I said before, if you think you're going to work for a long time, the brain's cheesed off and turned off before you begin. So little and often is better than long bursts. And try and build variety and do different things. You know, most training providers now will provide different means of studying. You've got lots of different bits of e-learning, you've got videos, you've got sort of recorded lectures, you've got textbooks, you've got questions to practice. Mix them up. Don't just do the same thing all the time. And you know, once you've hit your targets, set, give yourself a reward. Build in some fun. You know, if the whole thing is misery all the time, it's not going to go well. Ultimately, though, for most exams, one of the keys is memory. You know, people do well in exams if they can remember things. And a lot of people sort of say to me, oh, yeah, I just haven't got a good memory. Or a big thing I've got over and over again over the years, oh, I'm just a natural crammer. Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to work too much before the exam because I need to cram it just before the exam. No, if ever you're tempted to say I'm a natural crammer, what you're really saying is I'm lazy. That, that's all you mean. Everybody's a natural crammer because given the choice between working now and working at some point in the future, I'd rather do it later. But one of the keys to memory is repetition. Now, psychologists have done studies about people studying dull technical material and then seeing how much they can remember. And what they find is the amount that you can remember really doesn't last long. And when you think that you're sort of studying on the left-hand side of my diagram and the exams where I've just shown you there, then that's a little bit depressing because you're saying, well, I'm not going to remember it. And that's where the natural crammer bit comes in. The thing is, when you've actually gone through something, it is in your brain. It's just in your brain in a disorganized way. And your brain can't find it. It's like working on a computer and just saving everything on your desktop with no files anywhere. Well, you're never going to find it. After a bit, your desktop's cluttered. You come back to look for something well, somewhere on the desktop. No idea where. You'll never find it. And that's what tends to happen within the, the sort of folders in your brain when you study something for the first time. It's there, disorganized. So what you need to do is repeat it. Go through the material again. Now, it doesn't have to take as long. You can go through it in a more precede form, but repetition starts to organize the material in your brain and makes it more accessible. It means you remember more and you remember it for long enough. Still not enough though, so do it again. And as I say, the repetitions don't take as long as the first run through, even though they look more effective. They are more effective. But what they're doing is taking what's already in the brain 
and getting it in a form that you can actually access in the exam. And repetition is key. I, I, mean, I teach mainly tax and law, um, and I find that when a new piece of tax material comes out, the first two or th three times I teach it, I need my notes, because I haven't got it. Once I've explained it to people about three times, it's generally in my memory. I can then remember it, don't need notes anymore. Repetition. Also, it's the active bit about having to explain it to somebody else. That's a really good trick for learning things because it forces you to try and organize things in a way that makes sense to you. Coming on to the exam now, um, a lot of exams these days are multiple choice. <clears throat> Don't rush them. Uh, a lot of multiple choice questions will, I was going to say try and catch you out. Examiners don't try and catch you out, but students think they are, by putting negatives in, which of the following are not true. And in the pressure of an exam, easy to miss the word not. Also bear in mind, there's no negative marking. If you get it right, you get your mark. If you don't, you don't. So have a guess. And frequently, if you're guessing one from four, yeah, one or two you can normally eliminate quite straightforwardly. I mean, what's that Beethoven's name? Is it likely to have Shaking Stevens in? Probably not. So we can get rid of that one straight away. Meatloaf, who would have guessed? Never leave blanks. Long form questions. First thing is try and break the question down. Often a long form question might be, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25 marks. But tip the, the, the more the marks, the more important it is to break it down into sub-requirements and then make sure that you address every sub-requirement. And you've got to think about it from the marker's point of view. Marking an exam is misery. It's horrible. It's, it's worse to mark an exam than to do an exam. And so you've got to feel sorrier for the marker than you do for yourself. The marker is there with points on the marking guide. They're looking for those points in your script. So try and make sure that those points jump out to the marker. Don't bury them in a big essay. You know, a massive paragraph of writing is the last thing a marker wants to see. Points make prizes. I'm sure that was somebody's catchphrase somewhere. Um, your style of writing. Don't try and sort of do any sort of convoluted posh prose. Short sentences, short paragraphs and then leave space between the paragraphs. Markers like to have a bit of white space for their eyes to rest before they go on to the next bit that they're marking. And if in doubt, guess. I mean, I always say this in tax, if you're asked for a time limit, um, if you're asked for a you know, date by which an election's gotta be made, by which tax has gotta be paid, if you're asked for it, yeah, if you don't, obviously it's nice to know, but if you don't know, guess. Because if you get it wrong, what happens? You don't get a mark. If you don't guess at all, what happens? you don't get a mark. So you've lost nothing by guessing. And it's frightening how often people are terrified of being wrong. Don't want to be rude, but you will be wrong somewhere in your exam. That's not a problem. Just you, if you have a guess and you get it right, you've got a bonus mark. And every bonus mark gets you that much nearer to passing. Finally, time allocation. Look at how long there is for the exam. Look at how many minutes per mark you've got and look at how many marks are given for that particular question. And then make sure when you answer it, you stick roughly to that time allocation. Because if you spend much longer, you're clearly doing things the examiner doesn't want you to do and you'll miss easy marks on other questions.